Wow, good morning. This is Dal Box on Blossom Nigeria, and we are very excited to bring you this loaded package this morning. And also, to letter from Lagos, the weather report has it that it's 26 degrees Celsius, and in different parts of the city, there might be rainfall and very cloudy in other areas. Areas and different parts of the country. I would like to say to you, thank you so much. Good morning. I would like to let us know what's happening in your city, in your community, and let us know how to take it up from there. All right, so we have a, lo a loaded package this morning. We'll be looking at the Ibrahim Magu case and how the investigation has gone, the update so far, and uh, what is happening to help in the result that particular corruption allegation that does enrich the EFCC, that's the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Before we go fully into that, we'd like to also bring you some very good news of what is happening in different parts of the country and uh, some good news we can take some and let us know that this is or these are things we can encourage. First, we have the House of Representatives that has commenced investigation into the alleged 40 billion naira irregular in the Niger Delta Development Commission (NDDC), and this is with a view to reposition the commission for better service delivery. So we commend this, and we see this as something that should be seen to the end. The full investigative panel and coming up with um, a conclusion, whatever is the way forward should be given from this investigative panel. So we commend this move by the National Assembly, that's the House of Representatives, and they should see to the full completion of this exercise. Then we also have the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NMPC, that has advised against a swift relocation of tank farms from the current locations along Ijegu areas in Lagos and other parts of the country to avoid the location in the supply and distribution chain of petroleum products across the country. So we have a very good one from NMPC here. So all the irregular tank farms, where they are, they are, avoid, are advising against um, the setting up of such tank farms to uh, avoid the dislocation of the distribution of petroleum products across the country. Then we have the vice presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the 2019 Mr. Peter Obi, who has called on youths to get more involved in learning skills that will help them in the future, while urging governments also take up investment in vocational and technical education, as in be very, very more attentive to it, pay more attention to it, and see to it that this is an aspect of the nation's education system that should be encouraged from all fronts. Then Peter Obi said this while celebrating the World Youth Skills Day on July 15, stated, stated, which stated that the realities of today's world have shown that one needs skills to succeed irrespective of intellectual abilities. So in other words, despite the intellectual abilities that people have, they also need technical skills, vocational skills to succeed. Then the state government has announced a change in resumption of students in graduating classes at both the public and private schools from July 20 to August 20, uh, sorry, August 3rd. So instead of July 20, they'll be resuming on August 3rd. And this was from the Commissioner for Education, Mr. Fulusho Daramola, who gave this date during his media chat with the press at Ado Ekiti. So then the federal government insisting on no West African senior school certificate examinations for Nigerian students this year. So the federal government is still insisting on this. And uh, we are still looking forward to seeing how to get uh, a more balanced opinion on this particular issue. Then we have it that the Senate has passed a bill 
changing the Aochi Polytechnic in Edo State to City University of Technology. So that, that will be the new name of hands and that means much more attention will be given to make it indeed a city university of technology so from the bill that has been passed so far our chief polytechnic in Edo state will now be known as city university of technology so as we move on this morning we are looking at the efcc economic and financial commission and how everything is being the corruption issue that is currently going on there. The federal government also suspended the current directors that are working at the institution, the organization right now, for maybe a new set will be announced, but for now, no, the current directors have been asked to as in they've been suspended so the efcc and the, the notice of corruption in nigeria is what we are looking at a few days ago papers newspaper headlines were all about ibrahim magu his detention his ongoing investigation with the justice ayo salami led presidential investigative panel among other things magu was squeezed over 380 houses seven crude oil laden ships 37 billion naira worth of assets allegedly belonging to him so with the current update on investigation though the news also came yesterday which was on wednesday that bail has been granted to him so despite this the fcc directors have also been, been suspended as we earlier said but the question is how is being achieved in the anti-corruption war in Nigeria. So, and how can it be uh, taken to a more effective level? These and more we will need to look at in today's edition of Dialogue Box. How effective is, is uh, the current anti-corruption war that is going on in Nigeria? And we, like we said yesterday, a lot of concerns are being raised if the institution that should tackle corruption is also being probed for corruption so what should be the way forward so we said we were going to look at it and also you can provide your solutions and send us what you think is uh, the way forward for the efcc and the nigeria's anti-corruption war the anti-corruption fight in nigeria what should be the way forward the current update or mission that we have now. then according to our analysis if these allegations are true the question is or the question that is begging for answer is is this madness or corruption because a lot of times people find it difficult to um for for to believe that some of these amounts that are being measured are actually what is you know somebody's desire maybe somebody wanting to steal or siphon or you know put away 37 billion and that's a lot you know so maybe we will dedicate an episode to look at some of the implication of these monies what can 37 billion naira do for instance in the education sector and if we are to invest such an amount in the education sector across the 36 states of federation how much will it achieve and what will it achieve and that is what somebody will want to just put away so we think it's, it's not encouraging this is not good and this is not something that the nation should encourage at all in any sector so we are looking at this in a thorough way because we also expect you to contribute so send in your thoughts and let us know what you think should be the way forward in telling this monstrous monster that we are talking about, you know, when mentioned corruption in Nigeria, a lot of people have given up. They've seen it as a matter that is uh, beyond a uh, solution. But we know that there is no problem that does not have a solution. And everything that is like a major challenge out there, 
if we all make our minds or make up our minds rather that we can solve this problem we can actually solve it so the corruption issue is one of it so no matter how much is happening out there we can actually tackle it if every one of us contributes our own quota contribute our own um, aspect to the overall work that is being done both by the federal government by the state government even by individuals in different aspects when you see people requesting for kickbacks in different government offices and making it look as if without that thing being done they can't maybe offer you the service you are asking for it is all out of place and we know that there must be a way forward so we are saying that for for the Imago case, which is currently on, and even though he has been bailed, news reaching us says that he has been fully bailed. He is now a free man. And the investigation should continue. It shouldn't stop. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that we should just lay aside and say, okay, they have done what they need to do. So let um, Nigeria continue in its usual way. That is why Blossom Nigeria is here. And that is why through this programs and platforms we have like in dialogue box you can suggest i can suggest and we can look for a way forward in tackling most of these challenges then according to our analyst for if you look at the screen you'll see our numbers there 09052525107 so you can reach us you can call us you can also send us your your message that's the send your opinion to this particular a, a line right now so while we are doing this let's just give you some more heads up on what is happening in that efcc uh, area according to our analyst if these allegations are true the question that begs for answer is is this madness or corruption how could someone who was entrusted with the responsibility of corruption become the monster of corruption then on the other hand if these allegations are true, Magu could not carry them out or carried out some of these transactions single-handedly. No, there would have been people in the agency who covered up for him and supported him in some of these heinous activities. So how could Magu have carried out those atrocities under the watchful eyes of those whose main objective is to fish out criminals and criminal activities? And does it not mean that, or rather, does it mean that none of the directors in the EFCC knew about these illegal operations? And this could be the reason why the federal government has asked the directors working with Ibrahim Magu to be suspended while thorough investigation is carried out on them. So this would be a shame if EFCC claims ignorance or looks the other way when these criminal acts are being perpetrated. This would be a betrayal of trust from the Nigerian community, everybody in Nigeria, it will show that the trust we bestowed on EFCC has been, be has been betrayed. So then we also have the issue of, we have a new acting EFCC chairman, Mohammed Umar. So can the new EFCC chairman, Umar, honestly claim that he was not aware or not involved in Magu's shady deals? That's if Magu was proving to be really guilty. So it would be a shame if he, dis if he denies it, as that would go on to prove that he is not the man fit for the job. So we expect the presidency to know and act beyond just appointing a new acting chairman. If the President Buhari administration is serious with the fight against corruption, then they need to set up an independent team to probe just a second, we have a call coming in. Hello. Good morning. Yeah. Okay, this is Chris Suzami. Okay, thank you so much for calling in. We have uh, our analyst that has called in now. So we are looking at the Ibrahim Magu case, and we we want um, a very strong opinion from you, talking about how much is happening in that organization that is supposed to be fighting corruption, and if 
the replacement of the directors is going on right now. We were thinking that there should also be an investigative panel to look into what is behind some of these uh, heinous crimes that are going on in the EFCC that is supposed to stand against anti-corruption. So from the legal point of view, what, what is your take on this? Yeah, I, I just think that it's a sad uh, testimony of our democracy that there's so much corruption everywhere. Okay. Uh, it is sad that uh, the gatekeeper that was appointed to stop others from doing away with the loot mm -hmm. is now the one being investigated for stealing the for, for stealing the, the resources of the nation. Mm -hmm. Now, my my own take on all of this is that uh, it is not only in, in the ESCC that there's such corruption. Mm -hmm. There's corruption everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, the I, I am concerned that even though Ibrahim Magu is right now being investigated, mm. I am concerned that, that that investigation only came about because of interest. Okay. That means what I'm trying to say is that the same people investigating Ibrahim Magu today always knew that he was corrupt, always knew mm -hmm. about his corrupt dealings and all of that. Mm -hmm. then nobody moved against him mm. because uh, uh, the interest then were, were still pro, uh, protected. It's mm. only after he had, uh, it was, it's now apparent that uh, he has offended some people mm. that they are now opening his file to uh, start uh, uh, investigations. investigations. So my concern is that uh, the anti-corruption fight in Nigeria is not really uh, uh, moving as it should be. It's mm. moving against certain persons where some interests have either been offended or where some other interests need to be protected. Now, okay. if you look at the Ibrahim Magu saga, uh, after these revelations were made about uh, him selling some sheep, selling this and selling that, mm. without accounting for the proceeds of sale, mm. he and the people released some, uh, some documents mm. that clearly showed that the office of the Attorney General was also involved in the sale of those sheep. Mm -hmm. Now, in a country, where we say that the anti-corruption fight is actually genuine, immediately the investigation should have been opened mm. against the Attorney General because those letters released uh, has thrown up a prima facie situation okay. where it could be said that the Attorney General was also pre was also aware mm. of, of, of the sale of, of those ships. Okay. So the investigation should immediately have been expanded. My question is, why is the investigation still narrowed on Mago only mm. when it is it is now clear that uh, those involved in the corrupt practices were are, are far more than Mago? If the office of the Attorney General has mm. been indicted, suspicions, uh, suspicions have been cast on the occupier of that office, mm. and having also been privy to this the same corrupt act that Ibrahim Mago is being investigated for, then naturally the investigation should also uh, uh, move beyond Mago to also include the office of the Attorney General. Attorney General. That is why I am come to the conclusion that uh, the anti-corruption fight in Nigeria is only based on interest, protection of interest, and or wherever some interests have been offended. That, offended. to me, mm -hmm. is not a genuine anti-corruption fight. The government needs to do much more to restore the confidence of the people that what it is doing is uh, the anti-corruption fight that it is carrying on mm -hmm. is actually genuine and not just targeted at political ends. Okay, so now, to, for, for your own, uh, based on what you have said now, going forward, if the government is to expand the investigation and uh, knowing fully well that the government is in power, what can be done from both the judicial angle or the National Assembly, what can be done to work towards uh, kind of rectifying that particular situation that the country is right now? Yes, I expect the National Assembly to even get more involved yeah. in what is going on. Now, the place of the judiciary is that the judiciary are with whatever investigations have been carried out by the executive arm of government. Okay. Then, when the investigations have been concluded, the judiciary are with, with its law courts to give judgment Based after on, the case okay. has been brought against that person. So, I expect the National Assembly that if the presidency or if the, the presidential panel is unwilling to expand uh, its investigation, the National Assembly should wait in and ensure 
that uh, there is indeed an expanse of the investigation. Of the investigation. Let me give it for the example. Yes, mm. let me give it for the example. Uh, after Ibrahim Magu was suspended, mm. the person that was appointed as the acting chairman of the EFCC was his head of operations. Now, his head of operations is the person that carries out basically everything the chairman wants done. Yeah. So, uh, if the chairman is found to be corrupt, or if the chairman is suspected of corruption, of corruption. naturally, mm -hmm. I, I, naturally, I, I, I should think that the corruption dragnet should immediately extend to key officers of his administration, like his head of options, mm -hmm. his head of administration, and, and persons like that. Now, when you rush in to quickly appoint the, the XY head of operations as the acting head of the agency, without uh, uh, getting them to be sure, the corruption things that you are accusing a Ibrahimago of does not extend to, to the key to officers of mm -hmm. the administration. For me, I think that is worrisome. It is worrisome that we are we in in, in on, on the in the guise of fighting corruption, in the guise of trying to root out corruption from the EFC, we are still appointing members of the same corrupt network, the members of the team. same corrupt administration mm -hmm. as acting heads of the agency. So I think that the National Assembly should get far more involved. It shouldn't be just a bystander that uh, just wants to watch the events of, of, mm. uh, unfold. I think National Assembly should set up its own panel to ensure that the investigation gets to the right persons and that okay. indeed the right persons are brought to book. We, don't, we do not want a situation where uh, 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 beneficiaries of corruption are still, uh, uh, are still uh, alleged beneficiaries of corruption are still being appointed into office when they were members of the administration that is, uh, that is head is being investigated. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, Barrister. We appreciate your call. Thank you so much. That's a pleasure. Thank yes. you. All right, so that is a very good position that uh, Barrister Prince uh, Uzeme has already taken, that as we all know, corruption has eaten deep into the very fabric of the Nigerian society. But like we said, we can't just sit back and watch. We have to do whatever it takes to tackle this corruption, this endemic, whatever it is, and see to it that we minimize it to the barest and also get it off our system if it's possible. So what he has said is that apart from the presidential investigative panel that's been set up, he's suggesting that the National Assembly has its own investigative panel to look into the issue. Because the judiciary cannot act until they conclude with the investigation and come to the judiciary to say, okay, this is what we found out, you give your judgment. So all that needs to be done has to be done both from the executive and the uh, legislative form of government. So we are asking that the National Assembly should also wade more into this uh, the, the Ibrahim Mago saga and also using the same set of people, like he said, the previous head of operation, and appointing him as an acting um, head of the, the, the EFC is, is a major concern because you know, like he said, if the head of operation is to do his work or her work well, he or she must carry out the biddings of the chairman. So we need a system that is more independent than that. And that is why we are saying that for the EFC, a lot more needs to be done. To bring the city to that uh, mm -hmm. because um, it's actually supposed to be above board when it comes to corruption. So let's just take one or two comments here and uh, before we wrap up this morning's edition. Yeshua Iben says, Good morning, Blossom, Nigeria. The way forward is the FG to sack and probe all directors of EFCC and punish everyone found guilty. But we all know that the government will not take any action. This a second. We'll not take any action on this case. Later, somebody will say corruption is fighting back. A piece of corrupt people, <laughs> uh, so with uh, uh, the the he sees or signal. So all that we have to do with where is that the same set of people do not be used. And fighting corruption, you should not say no that corruption is fighting back. No. So you must do the needful in, in other words. And also, 
the savior is saying good morning the problem is not efcc but bad leadership this is where nigerians have failed and that is why we are asking nigerians to come up to step up step up their game because if we are to take care of them and move forward the way we ought to like we said yesterday this, this is the same country we are going to be living for our children and we shouldn't give them something that is like a, a monster in itself no so all we need to do is to sanitize the system and get rid of corruption to the barest minimum whatever we need to do we must do both from the executive the legislature and the judiciary everybody even the populace everybody must contribute their quota to building a better nation a more uh, a, a sanity based nation that is not given to every time is corruption matter or no no it must be sanitized so everybody must do what needs to be done then we have this from francis chuku saying corruption thrives when good men do nothing and that is why we are asking good men to do something today so we will come tomorrow and don't forget we'll be talking presidency we'll be looking at different individuals that are being nominated for our presidency work and talk and all that we need to do as we make preparations and gathering the nation together for a more eventful and productive 2023. So while that is happening, we will need everybody's input. So the individuals you are suggesting or nominating, you can send them. We have a website www.blossomnigeria.com then we also have a page on Facebook you can always visit us at any point in time and share your thoughts share your opinion and also you can also reach us on 090-5252-5107 then 08030887339 so all these are means through which we can also talk some more and give our own opinion for the any time of the day you, you send your message or your opinion you are sure to get uh, the right audience. So, like I said today, the Ibrahim Mago case is very key. No matter how much that we have um, against the Ibrahim Mago man himself, we must also fight the system. So, the man also needs to work on himself. But why that is going on, the system needs to be cleaned, and everything that needs to make the system function better is what we are working on. So, as we oh, now, don't forget, let's talk presidency tomorrow. And the, the person or the candidate for tomorrow is Baba Tunde Fashola for a discussion tomorrow. What do you think about him? We make very good presidential candidates. And what are the odds against him? So let's discuss Baba Tunde Fashola tomorrow as we talk presidency. Thank you so much for staying with us. And like we have said, for the whole day, you are free to send in your comments and your opinion on dialogue box on Blossom Nigeria. And everywhere you find us, you have the right audience. Thank you so much.